Hey guys, back to break down some MCQs. This video is on course three, what most people, including myself, found to be the trickiest exam of them all. I've said it before in other videos, I left the most confident after this exam, but when I got my mark, it was the worst of them all. So they definitely got a few tricky worded questions by me. But we're back at it, course three, exam master MCQ video breakdowns with me. As usual, if you're looking for additional support to pass these exams first try or to crush a retake, look for my exam master meeting course in the description below it goes from C1 all the way to Sims 2 more on that later in the video but let's just dive straight into the computer and breaks down some of these MCQs hey guys we're just at question one here if you've seen me do this before we just break down these questions I read them we go through it we go through the right answer why the wrong answers are wrong and maybe what they are and how they can help and you can learn from them stuff like that I mentioned my fundamentals as well we kind of just flow through it and I talk on a bunch of things that I possibly can, as well as topics that are going to come up on your specific exam. So I just go and I use the cursor. You'll notice that when I'm doing this, I kind of do it how I would do it if I was on the exam. I utilize the cursor. I move it to where it needs to be. I hover over things that seem correct. I eliminate them in my mind and move on on things that aren't. Okay, let's just basically just dive right into it. You'll see on the left-hand side, it shows what type of question it is and where roughly it's located in the material. Um, use command F if you need to find specific topics. Let's say, for instance, rent roll. Take the PDF. I'll put up some B-roll right now of me doing it. Hit command F, search within it, go to all the spots that show rent roll and write and read up on them. It's such an amazing hack to just like learn up on specific topics fast on the PDF versions where you don't have to click through on the Humber websites. Okay, guys, let's just go right into it. Uh, top left, deep breath. One, as a salesperson, you will be able to suggest tools to new landlords such as rent rolls. What is the purpose of a rent roll? Perfect. And you will probably see one or two questions on rent rolls, and they're good to know, especially if you plan on getting into this. Uh, a, the rent roll assists tenants in understanding the value and stability of a rental property. Okay, so you can eliminate that right away. Rent rolls, they basically assist sellers, buyers, landlords. They don't really assist the tenants. So I'd move on. Uh, B, a document that lists tenants, there's contract rents, and other details that landlords can use to determine rental income and support valuation for their rental property. Okay, nothing sounds wrong to me. There, always leave the mouse hovered over stuff that you don't quite know or that nothing sounds wrong on, right? So, but then read on. Um, C, it can provide details about rental income that can be used with the comparison comparison approach to find the exact value of a property. Okay. Keyword there. I'll take it off here for a second. Exact. Look for some words like this. And I talk about this in my fundamentals. First of all, nothing is going to be exact, right? So right away, you're like, hmm, it's a little tricky word. Uh, and then the comparison approach, right? So we're dealing most often with the income approach when it comes to rentals, right? So it would not be exact and it's the wrong approach. Okay, D, as a salesperson, you should not suggest tools as they could be used incorrectly and you could be liable. It's okay to suggest tools like this, right? You say, do your due diligence. These are tools that landlords are using often, yada, yada. It's perfectly fine. Plus on that particular end, answer right think to yourself and you might see an answer like this that is almost suggesting none of the above to a certain extent right because let's read the top again what is the purpose of a rent rule as a salesperson you should not suggest such tools if something comes up like that to suggest none of the above it's not really never going to be you can always eliminate that in your mind okay we'll answer b there and move on to top left deep breath most common uh, condominium corporations have restrictions on leasing and some prohibit short-term rentals, hotel slash Airbnb. Okay. If a condominium has such a rule, how can it affect the landlord if it is broken? Perfect. Off to A, it could affect their hotel rating and chances of future tenants. A future tenants. Okay. Um, I'm not going to even say future tenants. Let's just say you might see a question like that to make you laugh, but um, on to B, it could uh, affect the amount they will have to pay in maintenance fees. This would not be a penalty. For instance, if they found out that you were uh, having an Airbnb and that it's not allowed, they wouldn't be like, okay, we're going to jack up your maintenance fees. If you know what I mean, that would not be a penalty. I'd uh, eliminate, move on to C. It will affect the validity of a landlord's insurance if the unit is being used for short-term rentals. Okay, interesting. This sounds like a possible penalty to a certain extent. We'll leave it hover over. Uh, restrictions of this nature, although can be put in place by a condominium, condominium corporation, cannot be enforced. Okay, you know what's interesting about that answer, D, is that first of all, they can be enforced. We know that, so I'm going to eliminate the answer is C. 
but there is some stuff like that like like pets for instance how you can move in without a pet and then you can get a pet and it's very hard to get the person out that has a pet like there are certain scenarios like that but in this particular case um it can be enforced right because it significantly brings down the quality of life of a lot of the people that live in the building right obviously in a in a in a perfect world you'd buy a condominium and everybody would be owners right you'd have um a, like a better better quality or care for the unit uh higher standards stuff like that when you get into leases less so and even more so when you get into <laughs> Airbnb hotel. So answer C and move on. Three, top left deep breath. When adding a schedule to an agreement to lease, the schedule must fulfill all of the following requirements except which one. Okay, except. All right. So we're seeing these now as well, right? So you're seeing this is essentially a not question. Okay, so if you're not familiar with not questions, my fundamentals are three fingers on the table. It now represents that there's three incorrect answers, and you and I are looking for that one correct answer, right? So once you change that in your mind, right? So now it's the same with except which one. There are three correct. We're looking for the one incorrect. It's just another way of making a not question. Okay, off to A. State the pre-printed clauses of the agreement. Okay, state the pre-printed clauses of the agreement. The schedule must fulfill all the following. So basically, you're putting something into the schedule. Why am I putting the pre-printed clauses? I'm not rewriting them, right? So think about this. And again, make sure you know, don't get confused by the except. You're looking for that one incorrect answer. So leave it hover for now. State that it is part of the agreement. Okay, yes. Name the parties to the agreement. C, yes. D, state the date of, of the agreement. Exactly. Okay. So what is not, which of the, read the end again, all of the following requirements, except which one state the pre-printed clauses uh, to the agreement, right? The pre-printed clauses would be indicated in the previous pages of the agreement to lease, right? The schedule will have its own additional custom conditions or clauses related to the lease, which have to have those. All right. So this would be the answer uh, A and uh, we'll do a bit of a note here, right? So when when uh, I want to make a couple things on this one too, so we'll go as fast as possible. But basically, any clauses uh, must be added, must be so any clauses being added must be allowable under the Resid Residential Tenancies Act. Perfect. Uh, they must clearly state a uh, term, including who's responsible for adhering to what that term and who pays any related costs. Also note, right? That's basically what the question is. But basically, also note that any condition. Uh, added to the schedule supersedes any pre-printed clauses on the agreement to lease, right? So by essentially meaning it contradicts, if it contradicts anything written in the schedules, it will supersede. So it will trump to a certain extent. And a good practice, once you get in the real world, if it's something close like that, you would stroke out that pre-printed clauses. That is more real world talk, um, but that's how that would go. Okay. Uh, go over that question again, if I maybe went too fast or if you need to, uh, but no worries there. Okay, four, top left, deep breath. Maintenance fees, also known as common expenses, are fees that are calculated monthly from all the unit owners in the condominium corporation. What are these fees used for? Okay, off to A. The maintenance fees are used to market unit owners' properties uh, when they are looking to lease their unit. Okay, not a case. This can be, right? There can be properties or management as such that would do this for you, but it would be indicated in a separate budget and separate bill would occur. This is not the norm. Um, the maintenance fees will include insurance uh, management, repairs, maintenance, but not administration. Okay, be tricky or be cautious of these type of things. Sometimes when you're moving super fast through these exams, everything is right and it says, but not administration. Administration would be part of the maintenance fees. Uh, this, is a, this is a good example of what I call a 90 percenter, right? You'd read, you're like, yep, okay, we'll include, you're reading it fast, including insurance, maintenance, repairs, maintenance, uh, repair maintenance you might not even read but not and you may you might be like administration yep and you that then you'll just like click it and move on so be sure on th this exam specifically to re uh, read every uh, answer and question fully okay off to see a portion of the maintenance fees can be put towards the reserve fund which is held in their standard account and used solely for major repairs and replacement of the common elements again we're on a tricky worded question here this is held in their trust account, right? So, sorry, where is it made, put towards the return, which is the standard account? Okay, not their standard or general account, right? This would be in their trust account. So, small little things like that you got to look for. And then if you've process of eliminated your way to D and you already know, still read it, right? Uh, the fees are used to run the corporation and are based on the annual budget. 
Perfect. That is the answer. Okay, guys, those are the four questions. I'll do more questions like this if people want them. And of course, if anything comes up on these questions, uh, comment below. I'll help wherever I can. I really hope that helped guys. And as mentioned, if you're looking for that additional support, look to my exam master mini courses in the description below. It's mini notes, mini quizzes, my exact fundamentals I use to pass all exams first try and in four and a half months. And I also do video breakdowns similar to this on the four types of questions you may see on the exams. Those links as well in the description below are value links for the YouTube family for the time being. If you're new here, join our Humber College Real Estate Facebook group. I'll put that link in the description below as well. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll put the discount link for C3 right here. I'm Callum Moore, eXp Realty, real estate broker here in Ontario. Reach out on anything and we'll see you in the next one.